So that's it. And I guess my proposition here really is that I think within the vast majority of organisations, uh, HR is a, a what I call spoke in the wheel rather than the oil that makes the cogs turn. I think um, you ask any HR director what the most important things for them in an organisation are, and they'll talk about talent and engagement, they'll talk about uh, succession, they'll talk about all of these things, and then you look at what the team are doing, and 90% of the time is spent on process, procedure, telling people what they can't do, etc. etc. Which is just completely nuts. Um, and I guess you know, why is this? What is the value that we can do? Um, you know, you've got trust and control as a continuum, and you decide where you go along that line. Uh, I, I, um, I did a speech recently on social media, and I talked about the idea that we don't need a social media policy. Um, and uh, the reviews in the trade press by all the legal firms were calling me a bit of a muppet. But um, as I pointed out at the time, that's how they make their money, um, and therefore they would say that, wouldn't they? But, but if you take, sorry, I'm doing it again. <laughs> um, so if you take trust and, uh, trust and control as a continuum, um, and, uh, what I'm not saying is that you've got to be right down here with trust. You know, that only someone who, you know, as I just said, uh, who'd run a business no bigger than, than a cottage garden would ever say that you don't need any level of control. Of course you do. But I think as organisations and as HR functions, we should be shifting down towards the trust area by about 80%. You know, why do we do it? An employee comes to you and they say, you know, actually, I'm, I really want to do this. I want to do this with my hours. Um, Sorry, that's not in the procedure. I can't do that. Sorry, policy. But, you know, it, it wouldn't make that much difference. You know, I could just do it like this. No, I'm sorry, but you've actually got to go and do that. But that would be much more helpful. <laughs> but then I'd be setting a precedent. And if I do that for you, I've got to do that for everyone. Which is utterly, utterly bonkers. And we all know it's bonkers. We all know whether, you know, likewise when you're in customer experience and you phone up and someone says, oh, sorry, you know, actually it doesn't work like that. You've got to send this to that number and do that. And you think, oh, this is just crazy. And why is it? It's because it's easier. It makes things easier for us to have a, a, some sort of control of policy. We can just say, actually, A, B, C, D, through to Z, that's how it works. Um, it's fear. If we take away this control, people will do really bad stuff. You know, they're all, everyone's waiting to do really bad stuff. And it's only because I've got this policy here, which is like, <laughs> that thing's wins, that you guys aren't doing it. Again, we know it's totally not. And sorry, it's about the general calibre of HR people within an organisation. Martin and I was talking earlier. You know, most, most HR people are there probably because they couldn't get into nursery nursing or something. Um, and, um, people. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let you. Um, but I don't think we attract the calibre of people that can genuinely have a good quality relationship with someone and uh, interface with them on a very human level. It's much easier to hide behind something else. Yeah. And I talk about as humans, what do we need in life? We want, we want people to feel that they trust us. We like to feel trusted as humans. We like to feel that we've got a purpose and we've got value in that purpose and an understanding. And we like to feel that we're part of something bigger. Um, we don't like to feel that we're being processed. We don't like to feel that we're being controlled. And we don't generally like to feel that we're being told what we have to do. So, why set up our functions to do all the things that people don't want, not the things they do want? And then say, but we're all interested in, you know, people are our greatest asset and we're all about engagement and everything else. No, you're not. You're doing stupid stuff. Um, God, I've just gone down a dead end on that. But, <laughs> so let me reapply. So, I guess that's my belief. What have we done in Random House? Um, five years ago, I walked in on day one. Uh, it was actually, I think, day two. And I met someone very senior within the organisation, as you do, bright, shiny, new person. You go, Hi, I'm Neil. I'm new HR director. And they said, Oh, lovely to meet you, Neil. Great, welcome. Uh, I'll never see you again. <laughs> and I remember just walking away thinking, Oh my God, where am I? What is this? And their concept of HR was, You are going to tell me off. You're going to get in the way. You're going to make things difficult. Um, I had a conversation this morning with someone in my team. Um, and they said, uh, this is the only organisation that I've ever worked in where there's no distinction between HR and business. People don't talk about HR, they don't talk about business. It's just, you know, we get involved because we 
who can help and do stuff and advise me. Um, how, how have we done that? Um, stopping sending out, stupid things, stopping sending out dumb emails for what? Um, <coughs> those emails. Someone sent me at a Christmas party, it was one of the highlights of my career. I was at a Christmas party with someone I didn't know, they went and introduced on the Morris and they went, I love getting emails from you, it's always something really cool. How good is that? So, um, it's about working with people and seeing them as humans, not as processes. We stripped all our policies down, we took everything down and said, not that we have not got them, but we just rewrote them in the lightest possible way. We don't say you can't drink at work, we say don't be so drunk, you can't do your job. Um, we don't say, um, you know, if you do this, we will sack you, we'll say if you do this, we'll try and help you to sort it out. And actually we really don't want to sack you, but that, you know. Um, and we've done it by just recruiting people who genuinely can have conversations. You can sit with a manager and empathise with um, emotional intelligence as well as intellect. A lot of them aren't very skilled, traditionally skilled HR people. They have done loads of tribunals and stuff. But they can, they can have good quality conversations. And I guess that's what we're trying to do. Um, just to end you with a little story, which is a complete other end of that. Um, I'm very conscious that there's a video camera there, so I'm going to be very careful about um, being factually correct on this. But that is one view of HR. The other view I'd like to give you is an organisation I've worked in previously. Um, which is a big retailer, uh, about 52,000 people. And they were implementing an IT system, an HR system, um, like PeopleSoft or whatever, I don't know what it was, I can't remember. Um, and I was on a steering group and we had a conversation and uh, some of the very senior people said, the thing is we don't want to pay to, to customise this. You know, Customising this, is, it's going to be complicated, it's going to be costly. So what we need to do, 52,000 people, is standardise the terms and conditions. Because it was much easier to piss off 52,000 people by messing around with their pay days, this and the other, than it was to customise the system. Now that, for me, is one version of HR, I guess, what I'm talking about. And I think that's me. Right? <laughs>